Hello, hello everybody. Thank you for joining me on my channel today. Happy Friday. My name is Ashley, also known as Colorado Killer Queen, and I am so excited for today's review. As a reminder, I will be doing reviews every single Friday with my wonderful, wonderful friend, Katie Bloomberg from Popping the Popcorn. We are calling the segment Friday Fright Reviews. So we will be reviewing mostly horror movies every single Friday. We will be doing sci-fi and even some comedy, maybe some action in there as well. Who knows what we feel like doing, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. It'll be every Friday. So keep your eyes out for that. I'm gonna put Katie's information down in the description box below so that you can find her here on YouTube, so you can subscribe to her channel, like her videos, comment on her videos, give her the love, and I'll also um, put her Instagram profile down there as well, along with her Facebook. She's all over the place and you don't wanna miss what she posts. So having said that, I'm gonna move forward into the review today. So all throughout May, we have decided to choose werewolf movies, which is a great topic. Love werewolf movies. So this week was my choice and I decided to go with Ginger Snaps, which is a 2011 horror fantasy written by Karen Walton and John Fawcett, directed by John Fawcett, starring Emily Perkins as Bridget or B, and Catherine Isabel as Ginger, and Chris Lamke as Sam, who you will recognize from Final Destination 3. So, Ginger is 16. She's edgy, tough, and with her younger sister, Bridget. Um, she, they're into staging and photographing scenes of death. They've made a pact about dying together, so you'll see that is a common theme throughout the movie. In early October, on the night she has her first period, which is also the night of a full moon, Gen Ginger gets bit by a werewolf. Within a few days, some serious changes happen to her body and her temperament. Her sister Bridget, who is 15, tries to find a cure with the help of Sam, a local doper. As Bridget races against the clock, Halloween and another full moon approach, Ginger gets scarier and it isn't just local dogs that begin to die. So that's kind of the general plot there. Before I get too far into the review, I will add something onto that last sentence from that, uh, the storyline I just read. The opening scene of this movie is horrific and I hate it. Luckily, it's very short, so you kind of just get it over with. But I will warn you, it shows a dog that's been torn apart. Um, and they do use practical effects for this, so it's pretty gory. So if you have a problem, I'm just warning you ahead of time if you haven't seen this. Um, because I can watch horror movies all day and see people murdered all day. I know that makes me sound probably crazy, but I know I'm not alone. But when it comes to animals, I cannot deal with animals getting hurt or killed or anything in any situation. So I always have to kind of power through the beginning scene of this movie. Um, other than that, once you get past that, it's just fantastic. There is gore, but um, human. <laughs> and they did a great job with the gore in this movie. I feel like they did a great job with the blood. They did a great job with um, just the practical effects that they utilize. The werewolf itself, when Ginger finally turns into the werewolf and you see her, it's semi-close to an American werewolf in London, kind of that vibe. It's not as cool as the werewolf in that movie, but sort of that same, at least in the same ballpark as that. So they did a pretty good job um, with the werewolf, the special effects. They mostly use practical effects. Um, 
So that's always a huge thing for me. I am huge into practical effects. And when a movie can pull practical effects off and even blow me out of the water, it is a happy day for me. Um, I'm a huge Evil Dead fan, so practical effects matter. And I feel like they did a good job with this one. So another thing I love about this movie is the dynamic and the relationship between Bridget and Ginger. Um, Ginger is more, a little more outgoing than Bridget. Bridget is very uh, into herself in the sense of she just stays within herself other than, you know, Ginger, of course, she interacts with her, but she's just very um, individualistic. She doesn't like people. She's very different from everyone else. She's kind of the black sheep. She's very um, reserved. So you see that dynamic between them. You can tell that Bridget looks up to Ginger a lot and you can feel that love between them. Um, they do, you wonder what happened throughout their life. <laughs> Maybe nothing, but they're so into death. Um, there's a scene where they have to do a slideshow for one of their classes and they take all these different photos of um, it looking like her and Bridget killed themselves. So either there's one of Bridget that looks like she hung herself, there's ones of Ginger that looks like she got ran over or mauled or whatever it is. So. They're very um, into that type of thing, the darker side of life. Um, and that's where their suicide pact comes in. They basically agree um, that they're going to live together forever and they're gonna die together. So they're very close. They only depend on each other. They're really each other's only friends for the most part. So um, they're very different characters, especially as the main characters. So you notice them uh, throughout the movie dealing with bullying and you see once Ginger makes her change that her response to bullying also changes. Um, and some people get what they deserve, we'll just say. <laughs> So another thing that I personally love about this movie, and sorry guys, but this is a woman thing. Um, I love the play that they do with Ginger and her period because when this change starts happening, they think it's because she's starting her period, right? Um, she's growing hair in weird places. She's bleeding in weird places. So, you know, there's really nothing at first to trigger them into thinking that something out of the ordinary is happening. So that's a really cool play because it kind of puts them off guard. But then as the audience, you start noticing like, guys, that's not that's not what's happening. So that's very interesting. And I also love Ginger's personality and how it changes, um, even Bridget's. But Ginger, you know, starts really becoming uh, not afraid of dealing with people. She becomes more sexualized. She's just more, um, protective physically of her sister. She can be violent. Um, she eats people. <laughs> just, a, just a side note. Uh, so yeah, she has a crazy transformation, you can tell. And Bridget transforms, which is maybe my favorite part of this movie. Like I said, she starts out just so meek and you know, you just feel bad for her because she is a loner and she doesn't really have any friends. And, you know, even her sister, you can tell that she looks up to her sister and wants that, um, wants to be accepted by her. And so you see her go from that to wanting to help her sister beat whatever it is that's been happening. Bridget's the first one that realizes 
that uh, Ginger was bit by a wolf, which goes back to the that first scene I mentioned. That's kind of when you find out that this town has a wolf that's been terrorizing them. Forgot to mention that. Um, anyway, so when Ginger gets attacked by that wolf and gets bitten, all the changes start happening and Bridget is the only one that really puts those pieces together first. So she spends the movie doing whatever she can to support her sister and try to find a cure for this. So it's a great movie. It's a great movie if you love horror movies. It's great if you love werewolf movies. If you love sort of coming of age movies, which I do a lot. I'm a huge Judd Apatow fan and he is brilliant at those kinds of things. So I'm a big fan of that. Um, I'm a big fan of, you know, women being the stars. And so if you love that too, you'll love this movie. Uh, practical effects, you'll love that. Um, just prepare, it's not the best werewolf you'll ever see, but it's not bad. Um, and at least they did practical and didn't CGI it. Um, if you love mysteries, if you love gore, I mean, this movie's for everyone. It's a lot of fun. I recommend it to everyone I know anytime a werewolf movie gets brought up um, because it's definitely one of my very favorites. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap that up. I tried to keep spoilers out of this in case you haven't seen this. If you haven't, please go watch it and come back here and let's have a conversation in the comments or you can find me on Instagram and we can do it there. I just want to talk to you guys about this. Um, hear your thoughts. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What do you think? Reach out. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram. And again, look for Katie's information down below. Do the same for her. Um, we will be back with you next Friday with a fresh review. And we will be going live this Saturday on Katie's YouTube channel. Um, and we will be discussing with a couple of our other girlfriends um, in a segment called The Witching Hour. We're going to be discussing the poltergeist as well as other various topics. That is going to take place... Um, Oh my goodness, I'll have to come back on that. I believe it's 7.30 Eastern time is when that's going to start. I will, like I said, I'll come back and I'll put that in the description uh, in case I got that wrong. But join us Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun. And tune in every Friday for another great Friday Fright review. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I love you all. Have a great weekend.